Hey, Audacious Church, it's me, Chip. You know me, part of the worship team and missions team and love Manchester Central Campus, but also get to visit all the other ones at some point throughout the year. Hey, listen, we are still on our theme of favorite Bible heroes. Now, I've got a hint behind me, this punching bag. This is my son, Coles. He loves to punch in that thing. And that's a hint for you of the fighter that we're going to be talking about today. Believe it or not, before the time of Jake Paul and Bruce Lee and Rocky and Mike Tyson, Hulk Hogan, the ultimate warrior, macho man Randy Savage. We read in the Bible about a great hero of the faith, and his name was Jacob. He had his name changed to Israel. That's who I'm going to be talking about today. Now, here's the crazy thing about Jacob, our Bible hero of the day. He wrestled God. What? Yes, he wrestled against God. And the Bible describes the scenario and says that actually Jesus, God, recognizes, I can't beat him. I can't prevail over him. I want to read you the whole story. This is in Genesis chapter 32. This is after Jacob has just sent this amazing gift package off to his brother Esau. He was worried that Esau might want to kill him. And if you know some of the story of Jacob and Esau, you'll know why. But he sends off all these gifts, sends off his family. And then the Bible says, then Jacob was left alone. And a man with a capital M, this is our hint that actually this is the theophany. This is an appearance of God as a man in the Bible before Jesus. And a man with a capital M, wrestled with him until the break of day. Ooh, that was an all-night wrestle. Now, when he, with a capital H, God saw that God did not prevail against him, God touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he, capital H, God said, let me go, for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So God blessed him. What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he, capital H again, said, why is it that you ask about my name? And then the Bible finishes the story saying this, and he, capital H, God, blessed him there. Whoa! So please do read the whole story for yourself, but I just want to draw three really simple points. Number one, if you read it earlier in Genesis, you'll find that Jacob was already the recipient of a guaranteed generational blessing. The Bible describes God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you bless that line, you're blessed. If you curse that line, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're cursed. That is the, the Jewish nation. That is the, the original Jews. And uh, that's the origin of, of our Judeo-Christian faith as well. And we find that Jacob, even though he was guaranteed this generational blessing, he wanted more. And he was willing to fight for it. And my question for us this morning is, what blessing are we willing to fight for? You know, C.S. Lewis said this. He said, we are far too easily satisfied. Wow, we really are. We have no idea. Like, what are we contending for? What are we fighting for? What, what blessing are we God, asking God for today? You know, I can think about my own life. I can think about my family. I can think about things that are important to me. But what am I contending for? What am I fighting for today? Even willing to approach the throne of grace with confidence is the way the New Testament puts it. Ready to ask because we know that God already knows what we want before we even ask him for it. It's a great question that we can ask ourselves. And then the second thing is this. What are we weeping over? Oh, man. We had Dr. Leif yesterday. Remember him? He's been around for Luminous for a while. And we had him talking to the staff. And he was just talking to us about the fact that um, what, what you weep over, that is what you love. That's a real... A sign. It's a picture 
of what you care about, what matters most to you. What are we weeping over? What are we interceding for? Who are we interceding for? Are we far too easily satisfied? Are we ready to wrestle God for a blessing for uh, for this intercession? And then the third thing that I wanted to say is that Jacob was left with three things. Number one, he was left with a limp, right? You do not wrestle God and come away from that not changed forever and ever. Number two, he was left with a new name, Israel, which literally is translated one who wrestles with God. This moment defined the rest of his life. This is how powerful it is. And the nation of Israel, the, the country of Israel, the people of Israel, that all harkens back to this story of this person wrestling with God and interceding for that blessing. Uh, so he was left with a limp, he was left with a new name, and then finally he was left with a blessing. Guys, it's just as true today as it was back then that actually we get to pray for Israel to be blessed. And the Bible says those who bless Israel will be blessed. It also describes them as the apple of God's eye, the people of Israel, the nation of Israel. They're like God's pupil. It's where his focus is. This isn't a peripheral issue right now. It's not a political thing. It's not something that has just started to happen recently. This has been ongoing. The devil hates Israel. It is literally the fly in the ointment because he knows that the promises to Israel are that the world will know who God is because of the way he treats Israel. And so we as Christians, we as believers, we get to rally around and support our Jewish brothers and sisters at this time as they wrestle it can be our wrestle as well. So I want to encourage you guys to do that today. Ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to contend for? You know, there's this really great verse in the Bible. I think it's in Psalms and uh, it it calls Jerusalem a a cup of trembling. But then it goes on to say this. God says, give me no rest until I make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I mean, that's going to take a miracle right now. Even the news, media outlets, everybody is hating on Israel. But God can take what the enemy intended for evil. He can turn it around for good. Right now, Jerusalem is a cup of trembling. But we know that God says, give me no rest until I make her a praise in the earth. So let's make that our prayer. God bless you guys as you wrestle. I pray that you are able to weep over what you care about, what you love, and that that weeping will be your intercession today. God bless.